I am here with McDonald's CEO Steve Easterbrook. Steve, good morning to good you. Good morning to you. For almost two years, Steve, your stated mission was to become a, quote, modern progressive burger company. Yeah. A few months ago, you dropped that motto. That says something about the findings in your consumer research and how you've applied that to the company's strategy. What does it say? I think it means I spent too much time trying to explain what modern progressive meant. And uh, frankly, the more colloquial ambition we have is just to become a better McDonald's. And that's what we've really aspired to do the last two years. And we find people kind of get that uh, narrative a little easier. Is that to say that you're no longer as interested in being progressive? Oh, no, it's absolutely, that is driven through the cultural change we're going through. I mean, the reality is, the pace of change in the world is only going to increase, and people aren't waiting for McDonald's. So we need to have more agility and have more risk taking. That's something that we've really imbued across our teams in 120 countries around the world. And it's beginning to pay off. We're beginning to see the results. More customers are visiting more often. And that's the ultimate measure, the, 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 the strength of the business. You said yesterday, in fact, and this is a direct quote, our most important priority remains growing guest counts by serving more customers more often. Yeah. Your research holds all the answers. Mm -hmm. Guests want so many things, of yeah. course, right? I would like you to rank in order of importance these things all guests want some of. Right. Cheaper food, which you might describe as value. Value, yeah. Healthier ingredients, different menu options, tastier food, and a better experience. What's most important? Um, the experience is key, and a part of the element of that is speed as well. So the one thing we will never... Yes, of course. One of the things we'll never get a pass on is value and speed. I mean, those are fundamental part of our DNA. It's what all customers around the world expect. But as you say, customers are getting ever more demanding. So they want to see us respond to the things that matter on their agenda. So food quality is one of them. So we've been investing in, well, it's the fresh beef trial here for the quarter pound of patties, moving to cage-free eggs removing antibiotics in the poultry supply chain. When we invest on things that matter to customers, they respond very positively. So at the top, it's which, speed or value? Uh, you can't pick one or two. I mean, the, the reality one. is they are fundamental parts of our DNA. And then what comes after that? Well, I think increasingly consumers are, are, in, are expecting a great experience as they conduct so much more of their lives mm -hmm. on screens, on laptops, More so than iPads, the food phones. Oh, they just want that to be the same as it's always been? No, they, as I say, they love it when we do continue to invest in the quality of the food. They love our core traditional menu. But as we continue to improve the recipes, serve it hot and fresher, you know, we, we, we're, we're continuing to invest in the, the engine room of our restaurants and our kitchens. And as technology improves, we're able to capture those orders and, and prepare food hotter and fresher, and customers really do uh, enjoy that. Those are the things in your control. Of course, there are some sure. things not in your control. The economy, right. for example. Which economic variable, I should say, Steve, do you find, whether it's GDP growth, employment, tax rates, gas prices, consumer confidence, which is most directly correlated to yeah. the number of people coming in the door? I mean, we see consumer confidence as the ultimate barometer because many of those other aspects feed into it. You know, the money they have left at the end of a month, how, how much it costs to fill up their car with gas, that all, they're all contributors to the overall consumer confidence. Now, is it predictive or does it lag? Um, there are different ways you can gauge the consumer. I mean, ultimately... But if you see consumer confidence rising, yeah. does that portend more, a higher guest count? Oh, yeah. I mean, really what we need to, to be successful up until we've launched McDelivery, which I'm sure we'll chat about, is, is we need customers out and about and if they've got money in their pocket they're out and about they're ex they're going out to the theater they're going out shopping and you know we benefit from that activity so strong economic activity from the consumer does play into success immediate success within our business as well you mentioned moments ago the importance of taking risk is right. McDelivery a risk I don't think there's a uh, I think there's two elements to that so first of all and we have these conversations within our teams people say well shall we test it I say well if you if we're talking about testing whether customers like food delivered to them at home, we don't need to test that. We know they do. I mean, we can see the way that society is evolving. What we do want to get right is to make sure that the food that we deliver at home is of the quality and the standard, but firstly, that we expect, but you know, more importantly, that the customer expects. So where are the biggest risks you're taking? Oh, I think, you know, when you've got a business like ours, which um, 
really has worked at a certain pace in a certain momentum or period of time. When you try and accelerate that, you want to make sure that the, the restaurant level execution stays 100%. So when you're introducing mobile order and pay, when you bring in new fresh ingredients, when you're reinvesting in the dining areas with self-order kiosks, there's a lot of change for the restaurants to absorb. And getting that customer facing execution of that right day in day out is the biggest challenge because we're moving quickly but we have to because the world is as well. Steve when you make decisions like switching to fresh beef or taking hormones out of the poultry supply mm -hmm. to what degree are you responding to actual demand for higher quality ingredients to anticipating such demand based on consumer research or three making those kinds of choices for altruistic reasons like, say, the health of your customers? Well, I think there is definitely a combination of all three. I mean, the reality is we have seen time and time again when we invest on the customer's agenda, they respond well. It doesn't mean they want to pay more no. for their food, but they truly appreciate it if that sausage egg McMuffin is made with a cage-free egg. Because if they go to the supermarkets, they typically have to pay more for that. At McDonald's, we want to make sure they make, we're more democratic for the small d, that we're affordable for everyone. Whether it's cage-free eggs or hormone-free chicken, um, you're well aware, of course, that the choices McDonald's makes have an enormous impact yeah. on the food supply. What's the next frontier? Yeah, well, it's interesting. I mean, one of the things that we're um, in the early stages of is we're part of a global round table to define beef sustainability because the beef supply chain is one of the most environmentally intensive and clearly, as we want to be doing business and we want to make a positive contribution to the world, how can we help set up a definition for sustainable beef, for example? And that goes all the way from the ranchers and the farmers around the world, how they care for their cattle, all the way through the supply chain. So we think with more mouths to feed in 20 years' time than there are today, and for us to be a strong, successful business, that we have to be a responsible customer of agriculture. What does that mean specifically? Would you ever switch to, say, grass-fed beef or organic meat? Right. I, you're always um, limited to a certain degree by the existing agricultural standards and practices. But, certainly but you when, can change that. But certainly McDonald's when a customer like pulls us a big pulls lever. the lever. So, I mean, interestingly, so, so to use a real-life example with the cage-free eggs, I was told that after we made our commitment to move to cage-free eggs, more than 400 other restaurant businesses made a commitment in the four yes. weeks following that. So we can have an influence. That doesn't necessarily mean the supply is there. So we've got to work with the farmers as they transition. But um, I think we've, we, you know, by the, the changes we made and the movements we've made in our business, we've signaled that we want to be a positive contributor to agriculture over the long term. So how do you do it? What if it's not necessarily grass-fed or if it's not necessarily organic, although I have to imagine those are a couple of the things under consideration, what makes the beef supply more sustainable? Well, I mean, the beauty for us is be because of our size and our scale, we have the best supply chain in the world. I would say that bar none. I think in a global study, we're certainly in the top two across all the businesses and we're recognised for that. That means we have some really talented suppliers who their expertise is on seeing where the world's going and, and you know, we, we're encouraging them to explore all these opportunities. But the reality is, day in, day out, customers care about great quality food and that's why we're focused on. Why is it so challenging to make the transition to fresh beef? Well, actually, I mean, you can start all the way from whether you want to start from the supply side, because there's a totally, if you think about the way that not just you, you prepare the fresh patties versus the frozen patty, but you've got to transport them and you've got to store them. So you need more chiller space and less freezer space. Then you get to the restaurant and the handling of the food has to be done differently. The cooking times and temperatures on the grill are different. But ultimately, we've, we recognize all of that. But in the test markets we had in Dallas and Tulsa, customers said, this is juicier, tastier, and more beef flavor, and we're very encouraging that we went ahead. So we, our job is to solve the operational challenges, but deliver what the customer's asking for. Chipotle found out what it's like to get the supply chain wrong. Are you concerned, or are you mindful of their experience when you're working on something as challenging as fresh beef? I think we've been mindful since 1955, every single day. I mean, yeah, we never take for granted we have 60 odd million customers a day visit McDonald's around the world. The absolute number one priority for us is food safety. 
Steve, labor costs had an impact on your margins here in the United States last quarter. How much of a challenge is wage inflation for you at a corporate level and for your franchisees? Yeah, it's, I mean, we both feel it because we run company-operated restaurants, but 90% of our restaurants here in the U.S. are owned and operated by individual businessmen and women. So they feel it on the front line. I mean, we're looking for hiring the best talent in the service sector. Part of what we're working on is how do we retain that talent? And, and that is clearly pay is important, but so is development opportunities. So, you know, we offer educational support through what we call our Archways for Opportunity program. So English language lessons, college tuition support, um, helping them finish off high school diplomas. So we think part of the entire employment proposition is pay. Yes, absolutely fundamentally important, but also the broader uh, role we play as a, as a responsible employer. Has immigration policy had an impact on wage inflation yet? No, we haven't seen that. I mean, the, the, the piece we're, f we're finding now more than anything is as we're growing the business, as we're serving more customers, we're looking to hire more people. So really, we're in the marketplace. We're hiring. I mean, you've probably seen some of the activity we've recently done with Snapchat, where we've actually had snap applications. So people can put a little 10-second 10, 10 video forward, and we're looking to build our workforces in our restaurants around the country. How will you know Let's go back to McDelivery. Uh -huh. How will you know whether that's successful? What is the marker you need to see? It's about customer response. So not just in terms of sales and numbers of orders, but their satisfaction. So here we're working with Uber Eats, and we already know, I mean, the Uber Eats team feed back a lot of information to us. We know the satisfaction rates of McDonald's customers on Uber Eats are at a higher level than across their, 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 their common average. So we know we're off to a good start. But we know we've got a lot to improve on. Yeah, we can improve our packaging. We can improve the, the understanding of journey times from restaurant to home. You know, do we do that with a one-and-a-half-mile radius or a two-mile radius and certain times a day, certain days a week? But so don't you need to see a certain level of uptick to know whether it's successful? Well, if we serve one more person, then that's a good start. If we serve two more people, that's a good start. Then uh, we know consumers are eating food delivered at home, and therefore... It's not creating any additional capital investment for us in the restaurants, no greater degree of GNA for us as a corporation. Really, we are working our existing restaurants a little bit harder, which is fantastic. And we, we're seeing, so let me give you a couple of, couple of interesting facts on this one. 60% of the business that we're seeing through Uber Eats is evening and late night. Now, that's time when the restaurants are typically a little quieter. So we're now just working the asset and getting more benefit out of our existing restaurant where the investment's already been made, they're already staffed, the food's there ready to be prepared, so we're able to, uh, we, we see that the majority is incremental business, so we, we know we're off to a good start.